Just give it a try. Lambert cut Lai Yalin off as he bent down to unmask the agent. To their alarm, the man did not have a face, or rather, he did not have any facial features. What? What is this? Lai Yao was horror-struck. They proceeded to unmask the remaining nine men, and they were all faceless. Suddenly, a change occurred in the first man that Han Zio had asked them to unmask. As the mark of a black spider slowly appeared on his face, facial features also began to form and it soon became clear that it looked exactly like Black Spider's face. Next, the wounds on this person actually began to heal up, and after a while, this corpse's eyelids began to move. Blow his brains up. Han Zio instructed firmly. Lambert fired without hesitation. They proceeded to listen to Han Zio and repeat the same procedure one by one on whichever faceless man the same signs next appeared on. Lai Yulin and Lai Yao were thoroughly shocked by what was happening but they suppressed their doubts and carried out Han Zio's instructions. Although they had no idea how Han Zio knew of Black Spider's secret, he, without a doubt, knew his stuff. When there was only one faceless man left, Han Zio stopped them. Don't kill him, just cripple him. When the mark of the Black Spider and Black Spider's face formed completely on the faceless man, he opened his eyes in horror and shouted, how do you all know my superpowers? The name of his ability was. It allowed him to create a faceless copy out of himself after a certain period of time. The copy did not possess intelligence and could only operate and follow simple instructions within a fixed radius of himself. Each copy that Black Spider had was like an extra life, and he could reincarnate indefinitely as long as a copy still existed. Black Spider quickly calmed down and threatened, I have unlimited copies. Even if you destroy this body, you won't be able to kill me. Mark my words, I will definitely hunt you down for the rest of your lives. Lambert was about to raise his gun when Han Zio hurriedly stopped him. Follow my instructions. As Lai Yulin listened to Han Zio, she suddenly began to act high and all-knowing as she replied to Black Spider, unlimited copies. Stop trying to scare people. You can have at most have 50 bodies. As long as we don't kill this copy of you, we can lock you up for as long as we want. You have completed the E-Class mission, Black Spider, earning 5,000 experience. You have fulfilled the secret condition, take Black Spider in alive, earning 40,000 experience or a soul stabilizer. Over the next few days, Han Zio received many orders for the retractable knife. Although all of his clients were Division 13 agents, Han Zio preferred not to meet with any of them directly just in case. He instead relied on Lai Yulin to act as a middleman. The materials were sent directly to Han Zio's workshop, and he crafted dozens of retractable knives over the next few days, earning him quite a lot of experience, some of which he used to raise mechanic affinity to the highest level, thereby gaining another talent point. Back in Division 13, word that Lai Yulin's team had acquired a mechanic named Han Zio, and that he was open to private orders, spread like wildfire. As a result, the amount of orders he received skyrocketed, and Han Zio found himself barely able to meet the demand. Nonetheless, thanks to this, he was able to earn tons of experience each day. Unlike in his previous life, there were no competitors, so Han Zio had the entire market to himself. Han Zio only intended to take orders for both the retractable knife and high-explosive gunpowder, but he made an exception to craft a lightweight mecha arm for Lai Yulin. While the retractable knife was indeed selling like hot pancakes, Han Zio knew that its popularity would soon fizzle out. After all, most people were only buying it for its novelty. Moreover, as its design wasn't really that complex at all, it wouldn't be strange for imitations and similar products to appear in the near future. The research department had expected Han Zio to refuse their demands. To mechanics, blueprints were like their lifeline. They did not care about Han Zio's personal gain, or rather, that was to be expected, as the hardliners were hostile to him from the very start. In their eyes, giving Han Zio the chance to cooperate was a soft move, and he should have been locked up and controlled instead. On the other hand, the conservatives thought exactly the opposite. They were willing to give Han Zio the benefit of the doubt as he seemed trustworthy and was cooperative. Why cause unrest and animosity over a simple beginner equipment blueprint? The research department was offering high amounts of cash to the agents for the retractable knives that they had bought from Han Zio, which everyone saw through as a low move. As most of the agents did not know of Han Zio's special status, most felt that it was unreasonable to bully an ordinary mechanic so, and they decided not to turn in the knives. Doing so would also be, in some sense, disrespectful to Han Zio. However, there were still some who turned them in for the money. Korat was the first agent to strike a deal with the research department. He asked for $30,000, 30 times more than the opening offer, and the research department relented. 
His reasoning was simple, it was simply worth the money. While most of the agents held on to their morals, he laughed at them for being fools to pass up the opportunity. It's just a small-time mechanic anyway, who even cares? Just wait till the research department mass produces it if you really want it. In the research department, Luo Xuan and the head secretary were examining the retractable knife. Luo Xuan, can you reproduce it? Piece of cake. This thing isn't even well made, plus, it's not encrypted. Then I'll leave it to you. If you can figure out the blueprints, I'll pull you over into our department. Of course, your position will be higher. Liu Xuan's eyes lit up. Since his debacle over the mecha arm, he had started to feel that he did not have a future in logistics. If he could gain the favor of the higher-ups again, he would definitely be able to surpass that blasted Han Zio. Han Zio's phone rang. He picked up his phone to see that it was Lai Yalin. Something bad has happened. All the agents want to cancel their orders. What happened? Han Zio was shocked by the news. The research department has reverse-engineered the retractable knife, and they announced that they will proceed with mass production very soon and make it available to everyone. Although everyone could see how blatantly underhanded the research department was being, since they were going to be provided with free retractable knives, it was only natural for them to want to cancel their orders with Han Zio. The retractable knife's profitability had run its course. Han Zio sat in deep thought. He had not expected the research department to be so brazen. Although Han Zio had already known that something like this would happen, he did not expect them to take action so fast. While giving up the blueprints voluntarily would earn him some faction reputation, he would not be able to earn any experience. In any case, they were putting a dent in Han Zio plans to get stronger. News of the conflict between the research department and Han Zio spread throughout Division 13 like wildfire. As everyone thought Han Zio to be an ordinary mechanic, the outcome seemed obvious. Over the next few days, Han Zio showed no signs of action, so it became apparent that he had, as expected, decided to swallow it. Nonetheless, it still remained a mystery as to why the research department would pick on a normal staff member so much. Lai Yalin also suffered from the incident due to her involvement with Han Zio, and while she kept on trying to call Han Zio to speak to him, the line always failed to get through. Of course, Han Zio was not going to let things end like that. While he had not made his move yet, that was because his preparations were not complete. As the threat of war loomed, guns were heavily regulated in the Six Nations. It was in fact illegal for civilians to possess any, which was why Han Zio had gotten rid of his guns before entering the city. Nonetheless, there were illegal arms dealers situated all across the Six Nations. Neutral vendors such as these were implemented in Galaxy as a way for players to purchase equipment and intel as they carried out infiltration and assassination missions in enemy nations. Naturally, Han Zio knew exactly where these vendors were located. Han Zio was headed to District 8 to look for an arms dealer named Ma Zhu Si. Can you supply them long term? Asked Ma Zhu Si. Han Zio chuckled. Would you be interested in the blueprint? Ma Zhu Si's eyes widened. Blueprints were extremely important items to mechanics. They essentially gave their owners monopoly over their inventions. It was extremely rare that a mechanic would offer to sell one of his blueprints, so Ma Zhu Si was not only shocked but overjoyed. As he was a veteran salesman, however, he suppressed the excitement boiling within. Name your price, he asked casually. There's a hundred here, five thousand each, and I'll sell you the blueprint for a million. Ma Zhu Si frowned, but after a while of contemplation, he relented. Deal. Being able to obtain the blueprint was far too lucrative a chance to miss. Back in Division 13, Chief, you called. Your plans were approved yesterday. The retractable knife will be credited to your department. The research director was overjoyed to hear the news. Thank you for your trust, chief. The chief chuckled. Don't be happy so soon. The research director furrowed his brows. What happened? If it's about Han Zio, there won't be a problem. There's nothing he can do. Oh, you think so? Questioned the chief. The research director nodded. Good. Suddenly, the chief picked up a folder and threw it in the research director's face. To think that you would abuse your power to sell the division's technology for personal gain. How disappointing. What? When news of the research director being charged with selling weapons illegally broke out, all the agents in Division 13 were filled with disbelief. The fact that he was not immediately sentenced heavily hinted that there was more to the entire incident than met the eye. It did not take long for the agents to put two and two together and arrive at the unbelievable conclusion that Han Zio had orchestrated it all. Previously, they thought that Han Zio had kept quiet due to caving in. But in retrospect, it was simply the calm before the storm. Did he actually frame the research director? The gall of him. But doesn't that mean that the higher-ups are supporting him? 
What everyone found hardest to believe was that Han Zio actually got off scot-free. This caused a lot of speculation regarding his true identity to arise. And the person happiest to hear the news was none other than Lai Yalin, who was vindicated from all the odd looks that people had been giving here due to her connection to Han Zio. The research director was only given a strict warning for now, and, unable to touch Han Zio, his men suffered the brunt of his rage. Of course, Liu Xuan was not spared. Instead of his promised promotion, what he earned was a demotion to the position of an ordinary staff member. Damn it, cursed Liu Xuan. If he had known things would turn out like this, he would have obediently continued on in the logistics department. The next day, Han Zio received word from Feng Jun that the higher-ups wanted to discuss the matter of settlement with him. Finally, the chance for Han Zio to negotiate had come. Han Zio knew that in the future, the hardliners would not carelessly take action against him again. So it was probably the one time that he would be able to acquire advancement knowledge. Han Zio arrived at the HQ with his mask on as usual to meet with Feng Jun. Feng Jun led him to the chief's office where three people waited, the chief himself, the research director, and an old man who was faced against the glass window. Han Zio's acting skills immediately kicked in. Tall, old man. The tall old man chuckled. It must be quite a surprise. Who exactly are you? Asked Han Zio as he nodded blankly, similar to how he had once acted back in the germinal organization. All you need to know is that I have some power in Division 13. Don't be so nervous. I've already noticed you from back then. You gave me quite a favorable impression. Mission accomplished. As Han Zio wiped the confusion off his face, the tall old man scrutinized him for a second before slowly saying, Tell me, how do you want this matter resolved? I just want some compensation, Han Zio stated calmly. Isn't the money you earned from selling the blueprint enough compensation? The research director could not resist shooting his mouth off. Han Zio shot a look at him. If not for you trying to steal my blueprint, I would have been able to make even more money. And if you had even tried asking nicely, I might have even sold it to the division. But ask yourself, did you? The research director could not retort. What kind of compensation do you want? Asked Gu Hui. Han Zio faked a sigh and pretended to contemplate for a moment before replying. I don't want something like this to happen again. That's for sure. In any case, even if Han Zio only chose to sell his goods privately, he would still only be selling to Division 13 Second Zone agents. I want to have a look at advanced mechanic knowledge. The tall old man furrowed his brows. Was it a coincidence, or had Han Zio planned to ask for it from the very start? Advanced mechanic knowledge was top secret in Star Dragon, and only accessible with a level 5 or higher clearance. In Galaxy, the equivalent requirement was an honored reputation. Each of the six nations in the germinal organization possessed different kinds of advanced knowledge, but only the most trusted and deserving would have a chance to obtain them. Although Han Zio appeared calm and firm on the outside, he was actually extremely nervous. Such a request would normally be impossible to ask of. Now, it all depended on the tall, old man. Why advanced knowledge? Just curious. After five minutes of tense silence, the tall old man made up his mind. As he looked deeply into Han Zio's eyes, he slowly spoke, Fine, I will allow it. Han Zio was instantly overcome with relief and joy, but he suppressed his emotions. Suddenly, the research director interrupted, Hold on. Advanced knowledge requires a level 5 clearance. This is against the rules. Han Zio's mouth twitched. If this bastard dares to spoil my plans, I'll beat him into a pulp. What do you suggest then? Gu Hui asked unhappily. Rules are rules. Although you, senior, are okay with it, I hardly think that the others will agree. The tall old man smirked. Are you threatening me? I wouldn't dare, answered the research director matter-of-factly. My word alone will suffice, declared the tall old man plainly. The research head gritted his teeth. Suddenly, his eyes lit up. Then, I suggest granting him only half an hour of browsing. He doesn't even have the proper clearance anyway. Fu Huey and the tall old man exchanged looks. This was a fair suggestion. Besides, Han Zio himself had only asked to take a look. We'll give you one hour, declared Gu Huey. The research head rejoiced secretly. Even an hour would not be enough time to look through a third of the advanced knowledge. Deep down, however, Han Zio was laughing. One hour, watch me take one minute with my talent points. He had to bite his lip to stop himself from grinning. Calm down, calm down. The advanced knowledge was protected with an extremely secure multi-layered encryption. The code to unlocking it was a combined series of over 148-digit strings that were refreshed constantly. The contents itself were only able to be browsed by using a special terminal. Han Zio was brought by Gu Hui to take an elevator to a secret basement. 
When the lift doors opened, Han Zio was greeted by the sight of a brightly lit metallic hallway lined throughout with surveillance cameras on either side. While there were no guards, the corridor was full of metal detectors and red lasers, and there were guns concealed behind the walls. Han Zio noticed that there were actually countless optical fibers and advanced-looking computer parts laid inside the glass. The entire room was actually the terminal. Han Zio, however, was not impressed. Why is the air here so stale? Did you guys forget the ventilation or something? Gu Hui's eye twitched. He calmed himself down and replied, That is the interface. The preparations have been made. You will not be able to access any other information apart from the advanced knowledge. For the sake of protocol, I will remind you that we will be watching. And you had better not try anything funny. Got it? I won't make you laugh. Han Zio nodded and proceeded to walk to the panel. Now, no one in Star Dragon will be able to stop me. Han Zio pressed enter without hesitation. Immediately, columns of texts and complex diagrams flashed across on the screen. Advanced knowledge detected. Use two talent points to learn. Han Zio began to grow dizzy as all the knowledge on the screen started to transmit into his brain. Learning in progress, do not cancel. You may now choose one of the following three advancements, Cannon Master, Technician, or War Machine. These were the three paths available to mechanics, and choosing one was an irreversible decision. Over 80% of blueprints were exclusive to technicians, so choosing either path would mean forfeiting the ability to create many higher level gear and machines. The trade-off was that they were superior to technicians in combat, and, to most, more fun to play. After all, most people considered manufacturing classes to be boring. Technicians were always the least popular class until version 3.0. Congratulations, you have succeeded in class advancement. You are now a technician. When the process ended, Han Zio felt as though his body had been entirely remodeled. He could now see with stunning clarity the tiny specks of dust on the keyboard, and even the previously unnoticeable buzz of the current running throughout the glass sphere room was now clearly audible to him. A month had passed since Han Zio arrived at the western capital. Since then, Han Zio had earned an overall amount of 200,000 experience, which was equal to a third of what he had earned back in his six-month stint with the Germinal organization. Now, with over $1,500,000 in his possession, finances were the least of Han Zio's concern. The first-class advancement was the biggest game-changer as it granted the player an energy attribute. Han Zio lightly pressed his thumb towards his index finger. As soon as he did so, his index was enveloped by a sort of invisible air. It felt similar to a weak current, and Han Zio could discern that it was magnetism. Magnetism was one of the attributes that a mechanic could specialize in. Combat-wise, it was not as powerful as the destructive attributes of fire or lightning. Instead, its main use was in strengthening the machinery affinity of a mechanic. Oh right, I heard that it was a guy called Korat who stirred up this incident. Help me get word out that I won't be selling anything to this person. Feng Jun grimaced. Do you think I'm a messenger or something? Han Zio raised an eyebrow. Aren't you? Feng Jun opened his mouth, but no words came out. Fine, he groaned. He says he's blacklisted me. Korat laughed coldly, seemingly unfazed. All along, he had only been concerned with personal gain, and he did not see how Han Zio could ever pose a threat to him. Leader is out of the hospital. He's called us up. Han Zio found himself the last to arrive at the secret ops team meeting room, where, other than the trio, was another man. The man's face was extremely square, and he seemed both righteous and stern. He looked extremely reliable and currently had his lips pursed. So, you are Han Zio. The team leader's eyes were filled with both unhappiness and caution as he examined Han Zio. Han Zio was caught off guard by him. Suddenly, Lai Yao tugged on his sleeve and muttered to him, He has the final say in who can join secret ops. But since your case was special, and you had the approval from the higher-ups without going through him, he's a bit unhappy. But don't worry, leader might be strict, but he's not a bad person. Let me introduce myself, interrupted the leader. I am the team's leader, Zhang Wai. He introduced, shocking Han Zio a third time. How casual is your parents' naming sense? I think only Yi Qiu or Yi Fan could be worse. Han Zio's response, for some reason, caused Zhang Wai to look confused. With your inclusion, our team is back to being a five-man cell. Although your position is in the back line, I still have to say this, as your background is a complete mystery and I don't trust your ability yet, I will continue to observe you for now. I don't care if it's some high-level agent who assigned you here. If you fail to meet my expectations, I will kick you out of the squad. Suddenly, Lai Yao's laptop flashed, prompting him to turn his neck around with much effort. His expression changed as he yelled, There's an urgent mission. They want us to depart now. D 
details? Asked Jiang Wei sternly. Ma Qingyong's team was ambushed during their mission to assault a germinal base. The higher-ups want us to provide assistance immediately. They'll fill us in on the plane. Assaulting a germinal base? Wondered Han Zio. He could guess roughly what had occurred, having previously given Division 13 info on three of their bases. All three bases were situated within Star Dragon territory, which was why Star Dragon had been able to immediately mobilize its troops to destroy two of them. The destruction of these two bases had increased Han Zio's achievement progress rate to 2.0%. However, the Germinal were no fools and had clearly anticipated that the third base would be attacked as well. They had clearly set up a trap. Han Zio pondered for a moment before holding Lai Yilin back to pass her four magazines of high explosive ammo. Consider it a gift from a friend. Lai Yilin's eyes lit up upon seeing them. Is this your new invention? Han Zio chuckled. Don't squander them, they can start quite a fire. You have triggered the E-Class mission. Mission description. Provide assistance to the secret ops team being chased by the enemy. Your role is to assist your teammates in completing this mission. Mission requirement. Successfully rescue Ma King Yong's squad. Mission rewards. 8,000 experience. Bonus rewards. None. An hour later, the jet arrived at their destination. It was a cold desert filled with long stretches of dunes, and a bright, scorching sun was hanging in the azure sky the intense heat of which caused the air to shimmer and the ground to simmer. Upon contact with the sand, the agent's boots instantly gave off a burnt smell. We have arrived, reported Zhang Wai in a deep voice. The trio were fully equipped. Lai Yulin, still with that yellow hoodie and black bodysuit, had a retractable knife by her waist and a black bag over her back that contained the lightweight mecha arm. Lambert carried ten modified retractable daggers and a huge, large-caliber rifle. And Zhang Wai, whose equipment gave even Han Zio a shock. It was a powered armor suit. Zhang Wai's entire body was covered inside a sturdy, grayish suit of armor that spotted a few scars of battle. The helmet would have fit right in with the Middle Ages and only had openings for vision, but the arms were modified and fitted two thick-barreled machine guns. Soon after, the sound of engines began to approach, and on the vast desert plains appeared a single vehicle being chased by over a dozen others. The sound of gunfire was incessant, and behind the fleeing car was a continuous trail of smoke and blasts. The board were none other than Ma King Young's squad. Ready, ordered Zhang Wei sternly as he closely waited for the germinal vehicles to come in range. Fire, suddenly, from behind the hill, a rain of metal dense enough to cover the sky descended upon the surprised germinal agents. Bullets rang and clattered non-stop as they hit the armored vehicles. Upon the sudden ambush, the leading germinal vehicle immediately spun around to avoid direct hits, almost overturning as it skidded. Within the space of a few seconds, the two cars exploded into balls of flames. Meanwhile, Lambert was showcasing his skill with the rifle. He remained still as he fired shot after shot of steel core bullets with 100% accuracy to halt the enemy's advance. The reinforcements are here. Aboard the fleeing car, Ma King Yong and his teammates rejoiced. Right at this moment, a strange gale of wind suddenly descended upon the rescue team's location. The dancing sand began to form the image of a ghostly face. The sight of it was both unnerving and ominous. Duck, bellowed Zhang Wai as he hurriedly dropped to the ground to roll away. As the armored suit was too heavy, he did not have many other choices of movement. Lai Yulin and Lambert were the quickest to react, and they managed to duck to a side. As the gale crashed onto the ground, the blast sent a number of field agents flying. Zhang Wai suddenly felt a sharp pain throughout his mind, and his nose started to bleed. As he looked around, to his horror, the other field agents who had not been able to run away in time were all bleeding profusely from their orifices as they twitched uncontrollably. Mental attack, yelled a shocked Zhang Wai. The enemy is a superhuman. As he looked towards the enemy fleet to find the source of the attack, he noticed the hood of one of the cars open up, and a slender woman in a jet black leather suit jumped out and started running towards them at an incredible speed. Her head full of red hair floated behind her, making her seem like some kind of red and black flash of lightning. Han Zio furrowed his brows, pushing Lai Yao to take command. He barked, she is the germinal's combat commander. Quickly flee. Zhang Wai was about to reprimand Han Zio for snatching command when, to his surprise, he discovered that Lai Yulin and Lambert were unhesitatingly retreating. It appeared as though they fully trusted in Han Zio's judgment. Is the new guy that reliable? She's too fast. Lai Yulin, it's up to you. Without a moment's hesitation, Lai Yulin turned around to face the incoming Gila. As she kicked towards her direction, a yellow burst of energy shot out that managed to push Gila back a few steps. Pugilist, Gila squinted at Lai Yulin as she clasped both hands together, conjuring an even larger ghostly face that smashed towards her. 
Maintaining her composure, Lai Yulin ducked underneath the ghostly face with a slide and managed to avoid a direct hit. Seizing the initiative, Lai Yulin followed up with a series of powerful strikes with her legs, a stamp, a smash, a sweep, and a kick, the string of attacks flowing beautifully like a dancing swallow. The fact that Hila did not seem to be receiving any damage at all only went to show how far apart they were in terms of strength. Lai Yulin specialized in close combat yet could not overwhelm her. The exchange lasted for only a few seconds, but anything could have happened in that short span of time. Use the mecha arm. It'll let you help Lambert get a chance to snipe her. Biting her lip, Lai Yulin quickly inserted her left arm into the bag and pulled it out with the lightweight mechanical arm equipped. With a powerful strike combining her own power with that of the mecha arm, she finally managed to break through Hila's defenses by blowing her arms away, leaving her chest exposed. The mecha arm followed through into her flesh. A direct hit. Hila's face flashed red momentarily. As Hila examined the familiar visage of the lightweight mecha arm, she yelled in rage and shock. How are you related to Zero? Zero? Who? Lai Yulin was bewildered. Right at this moment, Lambert saw his opportunity and fired a shot. Hila's expression changed at the sound of the sniper rifle, and she immediately lunged sideways to dodge while enveloping her entire body with her gray aura. The large caliber sniper rifle bullet hit her on the shoulder, sending her spinning backwards in the air, as though hit by a train at full speed. Zhang Wai, quickly take Lai Yulin and run. Zhang Wai did not take offense at being directly called by name. It was with Han Zio's direction that Lai Yulin and Lambert had managed to injure the scary woman, and he now had some trust in Han Zio's judgment. He hurriedly lifted Lai Yulin in his hands and turned around to leap towards Ma King Yang's vehicle. As they retreated, the remainder of the germinal fleet arrived at the foot of the hill, and they began to open fire. Sparks flew as the bullets deflected off Zhang Wai's armored suit, only leaving dents and marks. Zhang Wai did not even bother to take a look behind him. All that was going through his head was that the armored suit was truly his lucky charm this day. Look out above. Above. Zhang Wai gave a start. Right, they still have a helicopter. The Black Harrier finally made its appearance and began to shoot down at their car. We have to take that out somehow. Assess Zhang Wai immediately. If not, our own aircraft will be in danger. Lambert, it's up to you and your sniper rifle. Lambert shook his head plainly. I'm all out of armor-piercing shells. Standard bullets won't do against the Black Harrier's thick armor. Even if I had some left, it would take more than seven shots. Are we really going to die here? Despair was written all over Ma King Yan's face. They were only a kilometer away from their escape plan's extraction point but it did not seem like they would make it. Suddenly, Han Zio spoke, Did you forget my present? Lai Yulin gave a start and hurriedly took out the four magazines. One of them was filled with rifle bullets. What does this do? See for yourself. Lambert quickly took the magazine from Lai Yulin and loaded his sniper rifle. As he readied to fire the shot, everyone watched on in anticipation. This single bullet was their final hope. In this critical moment, time seemed to slow down for all of them. As soon as Lambert pulled the trigger, a brass shell flew out from the chamber, and the crimson bullet was ignited as it accelerated out of the barrel spinning. Whirling, it landed directly on the helicopter's bulletproof glass. Suddenly, the crimson bullet opened up like a blooming flower to expose its explosive contents to the air. Kaboom! The entire helicopter was instantly engulfed in a giant ball of flames. On closer inspection, the fire was actually burning off on the very armor itself, as though it had actually been ignited. The helicopter began to spin out on control mid-air. Even reinforced armor was ignited. What the hell is this ammo? Who got their hands on such good treasure? Asked a stupefied Ma King Yong. Lai Yulin's eyes began to shine. This stuff is good. She immediately loaded up her handgun with one of the magazines and fired a few shots. The pursuing enemy vehicle similarly went up in balls of flames, and even the missed shots were setting the ground ablaze. Back on the ground, Hila's face was pale. Where she had been shot at on her shoulder was only a shallow wound. She was using her gray aura to heal it up. As she grudgingly watched the aircraft leave, she made a call to the boss and said through gritted teeth, We've found Zero's trail. Completed. You have earned 8,000 experience points, plus 100 reputation. Bro Zio, you're the best. Lai Yao's eyes glowed with admiration. Eh, you only just realized replied Han Zio with a hint of smugness. Zhang Wai, realizing that he had misjudged Han Zio, apologized. Sorry for doubting your ability before. Today, we only made it out alive thanks to your guidance and your equipment. Welcome to the team. A late welcome was better than none. Han Zio chuckled. No need to apologize over such trivial matters, I'm a gracious man. Zhang Wai felt a shiver down his spine. 
news of how the mission unfolded spread like wildfire in Division 13. Naturally, the incendiary bullets became the talk of the town. Han Zio's new product. I heard that that's what saved their lives. The retractable knife incident had already garnered Han Zio a lot of attention. Upon Ma King Yong's order of the bullets becoming public knowledge, many agents came forward to inquire about them. It was a revolutionary invention. And this time, the top brass knew they had to make sure that things would not end up like the previous fiasco. They even brought the research director in for a warning before he even did anything. The division offered Han Zio numerous terms to provide both field ops and special ops with the new bullets, and he agreed to sell them at a slightly lower price of $20,000 for 500 bullets. In just the first day alone, Han Zio's stockpile of a few thousand bullets was sold out, earning him $200,000. Not selling to me. Korat was fuming. Initially, he had thought that a simple apology would resolve the grudge between him and Han Zio. After all, money was money. However, Lai Yilin actually shut the door tight on him. Han Zio said that you're on his blacklist, and he instructed me not to take either your money nor your apology. The other agents who had initially thought of reporting the retractable knife had Korat to thank for taking the initiative back then, or else they would be in the same predicament as him now. When Korat offered to buy the bullets from his colleagues at a higher price, he found out that none of them were willing to. Even when he set his price at 200 a bullet, no one agreed, not even his closest colleagues. He was clearly being ostracized, but he could not understand why, until one of his old friends told him, selling to you would offend Han Zio. No one would want to risk being blacklisted by him, seeing as to how he probably will come up with more good stuff. Meanwhile, in a workroom, Liu Xuan opened up a box before him to reveal 20 incendiary bullets. He had gotten someone to help him acquire them. Han Zio had only blacklisted Korat and his team, not Liu Xuan. In Han Zio's eyes, Liu Xuan had simply been doing his job as part of the research department in trying to reverse engineer his blueprints. At the very least, he did not seem as vile to Han Zio as Korat did. Now that the research department was being kept under watch, there was no need for Han Zio to worry about them. Damn you, Han Zio. Do you look down on me so much that you ignore me? What he did not realize was that Han Zio did not look down on him. Instead, Han Zio had never even seen him before. To avoid offending Han Zio, the research director lay down an order preventing anyone from researching Han Zio's bullets. But Liu Xuan naturally did not care, and he still thought of himself as superior to Han Zio, and that he could easily reproduce the bullets, like with the retractable knife. If I succeed, the higher-ups will definitely value me even more. I cannot afford to fail. The more Liu Xuan thought about it, the more perfect his plan seemed to himself. Taking a deep breath to prepare himself, Liu Xuan began to work at opening the bullet up. Suddenly, a blazing light filled up his entire vision. Ring. The shrill of the fire alarm rang through the hallways as the fire spread. Thick, black smoke filled up the entire research department as the research staff headed for safety. The sprinklers quickly put a stop to the spreading fire, but many documents were ruined, and sparks were flying out of some computers and machines. The walls and ceiling were filled with black burn marks. What could have caused the fire? Luo Xuan, his entire body soaking wet, and his entire face black, was supported out by the guards. All his hair had been burnt off, including his eyebrows, and he looked just like a soy egg, or rather, a century egg. Being able to react quickly, in addition to having a fire extinguisher nearby, saved him from further disfigurement. He had not expected the incendiary agent to be gaseous. It combusted the very second it came into contact with the atmosphere. Liu Xuan had clearly overestimated himself. I've lost, he grudgingly admitted. What have you done? Yelled the research director. Are my orders something to be taken lightly of? When the higher-ups investigate, this will all fall onto me again. You bastards. Suddenly, the phone rang. It was Feng Jun, who said gravely, Han Zio, germinal operatives are on the move. They seem to know that you are with us and are trying to track you down. I know, Han Zio had expected this. He had instructed Lai Yilin to use the mecha arm while knowing that Hila would recognize it. Rest assured, there will be men keeping watch around you 24-7. The western capital was Division 13 Seconds Territory. Even if the germinal organization were to find out Han Zio's exact location, they would probably not be able to touch him. Not easily, at least. Still, as there were several superhuman assassins amongst their ranks, Han Zio knew that he could not afford to let his guard down. A few days ago, upon learning of the appearance of the mecha arm in the hands of a Star Dragon agent, the boss came to the conclusion that it must have been Zero who leaked information on their three bases to Star Dragon. Is he a psychic? 
the boss found it hard to explain how Zero could have accessed top secret information. In fact, he had not once suspected Zero. Instead, he had mistakenly assumed that there was a traitor amongst his ranks. As a result, he had even wrongly killed one commander. I may have underestimated you, but you are still a nobody. I don't believe that you possess more intel. Pass down my order, recruit some wanderers to investigate Zero's trail in Star Dragon. If found, send Rosa to finish him off. The platinum alloy was an alloy composed from a few rare ores. Hanzio had to spend quite a sum of money to purchase enough of them. After making the alloy, Hanzio used it to craft a retractable knife and another lightweight mecha arm. Both had above average stats, as expected, and the retractable knife was even of a higher grade. Suddenly, a notification sound played. When Hanzio opened up the notification, he received a huge shock. Beta testing has been scheduled. Retrieving information. Retrieval complete. Beta test period, 12 days. Beta testing. I completely forgot about that. Han Zhao vaguely remembered that the beta test had been a two-day event. As time was accelerated by six times in Galaxy, that translated to exactly 12 days. The beta test period was extremely short and only had 30,000 slots. Most of them were taken up by big corporations and gaming organizations, leaving only a fraction to be distributed through a lottery system. Han Zio was not lucky enough to win a slot. NPC functions unlocked. Discussion board unlocked. NPC functions. What's this? As it did not come with any further information, it seemed that Han Zio would have to figure it out on his own. In any case, it was likely to do with the ways that NPCs interacted with players, such as handing out quests, buying and selling goods, and imparting skills. In the beta test, the 30,000 players were distributed across over a dozen planets. Han Zio was not too concerned over this, as one or two thousand players per planet would not really have much of an impact. Official release would be when all hell broke loose. Nonetheless, interacting with some of them would be a good opportunity to learn more about his NPC functions. The discussion board, on the other hand, was something that Han Zio was already familiar with. It was an internal forum that players frequented a lot, especially while waiting to revive. Han Zio clicked it out of curiosity, attempting to connect to the dive capsule. No player detected. Registration failed. It took a few moments for Han Zio to understand why. Accounts for the discussion board could only be created with the unique ID of the user's dive capsule. This rule was implemented as a measure against trolls. Well, I can't create a forum account, but at least I can access the forum for reading. There were a million questions on Han Zio's mind regarding the state of his existence. Perhaps, this forum would be able to give him the answers if he watched out for his own username. Interacting with the beta testers will be a good start. Character name, Frenzied Sword. Regular settings selected. Character creation complete. Race, human. Based on your preferences, you have been matched to planet Aquamarine. Starting zone, Bighorn Village. Spawning, please wait. Bighorn Village was one of several starting zones on planet Aquamarine. As Frenzied Sword's consciousness slowly adjusted, he found himself standing atop a Lois field. The warmth of the sun felt just like it was real and so too did the earthly smell of the soil. When he looked down to see his two arms, he was shocked by how realistic they looked and felt. It was a small field, and Frenzied Sword noticed that there were hundreds of other players around him. They, too, were curiously examining their bodies. Each player's name was displayed on the top of his head. Following the mini guides shown during character creation, Frenzied Sword opened up the character information window. It displayed that he was Alvi. One and also showed the default starting equipment that he was equipped with, a shirt, a pair of pants, and a pair of shoes. They did not come with any stat bonuses. Damn it, I can't strip. A fellow player nearby was causing a commotion. He appeared to be trying to remove his pants unsuccessfully. What the hell are you even trying to do that for? The alarmed frenzied sword decided that moving away would be a good idea. Conversation broke out amongst the crowd. This is so realistic. What should we do now? Any hints? Suddenly, a white-bearded, fearsome-looking white elderly man appeared before the crowd and bellowed, All of you outsiders. If you want to eat, then find yourself a job. Loafers are not welcome in our village. The crops in our farms need picking, and the shops to the south need workers. As long as you work hard, you will have food to eat. Frenzied Sword examined the old man. Based on your level, you acquired the following information. Xander, Bighorn Mountain Village Chief. Level, Stats, Danger Level, Middle. Players had an examine function that allowed them to learn an NPC's name and information. As the players went about their quests, many started to find themselves enjoying the game. Quests were tiring yet felt so fulfilling. Today is a blessed day. 
Let's see. Seems like Stardragon isn't a bad choice. Bighorn Mountain was situated in Stardragon, and the public train station was not too far away. After three days, the train arrived at the western capital. Upon arriving at the great metal fences, each of them received a system message, alerting them of a new explored location. So, discovering places gives experience too. Ha, huh, this is amazing. Suddenly, he noticed a masked man watching him. Something about the way the man was looking at him seemed odd. As Frenzied Sword felt a chill run down his spine, he instinctively used the examine function. Name, Hanzaio. Level, Stats, Danger Level, Fatal. Fatal Danger. Frenzied Sword Gult. Even the armored security guard just now only had a high danger level. This was his most dangerous encounter yet. Who exactly was this guy whose information was full of question marks? Shouldn't it be safe in the city? Will today be the first time that I die? Suddenly, the man spoke, examining someone you just met. That's not very polite. Frenzied Sword gave a start. According to the official information, an NPC would know if it had been examined if it was over 30 levels higher than the player using the function. Han Zio chuckled to himself. He had simply predicted Frenzied Sword's course of action. Brave adventurer, do you have time to help me? A standard line for a quest giver. Frenzied Sword's eyes widened. To think that I'd get the chance to interact with a high-level NPC this soon. This place is the best. He replied, as calmly as he could, I am willing to help. I need a loaf of bread. Can you find one? A confirmation window popped up as soon as Han Zio asked the question. Do you wish to issue a quest to Frenzied Sword? Please set the requirements and rewards for the mission. The maximum reward was currently set to 11,600 experience points. It also seemed to be provided by the system, meaning that Han Zio would not have need to fork any out of his own pocket. Daily reward limit referred to the amount of experience reward that Han Zio could issue out in a day. Currently, it was fixed at five times the maximum reward. As Han Zio tested the settings out, he discovered a limitation. If the current maximum reward did not meet the minimum amount required for a quest, he would not be able to issue it. A rank a quest such as destroying the germinal organization would require a rank a reward. Han Zio's maximum reward of 11,600 meant that he could only issue E-rank quests. E-rank quests required a reward of at least 30,000 exp. Han Zio's eyes began to twinkle. It was possible to use this function to manipulate players into doing his bidding. After all, players would do any quest if the reward was high enough. Han Zio suddenly had an epiphany. I have to increase my maximum reward. In most games, it was the key, high-level NPCs who gave the hardest missions and the highest rewards. There was an icon in the shape of a person beside Frenzied Sword's name above his head. When Han Zio focused on it, an RPG-style meter bar popped out. The bar was half red, half green, and with a needle at the center. I can even do this. Han Zio was a bit scared to try. What if changing this also adjusted his thoughts? If I set favorability to maximum, will I turn gay on the spot? No 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 no, I can't risk that. Han Zio decided to test it by moving the needle slightly left to reduce favorability by 5. He heaved a sigh of relief when nothing else seemed to change. This function isn't very useful. Your favorability with Han Zio has dropped by 5. Current status, stranger. What the? Why would my favorability go down after quest completion? What the hell? Hey kid, not bad. I only sell my goods to people I like, and I like you. Frenzied Sword's jaw dropped. My favorability dropped, but he still says that he likes me. Do you want to open up a shop to Frenzied Sword? A shop window immediately popped up. An idea suddenly came to Han Zio. I can set favorability requirements to manipulate, I mean, attract players to keep coming back for quests. Han Zio was reminded of how he had spent long hours grinding out high difficulty quests just to achieve exalted status with the Alliance of Light, all for the sake of a battleship. Now, however, the tables had turned. A shop interface popped up in front of Frenzied Sword. As he scanned through the items, his eyes began to widen in disbelief. Godly equips. He blurted. Frenzied Sword was shaking uncontrollably. To him, all of these were godly equips that would allow him to surpass any other player. However, his expression changed when he looked at their price tags. It was as if someone had poured a bucket of cold water over him. But Frenzied Sword only knew true pain when he took a look at the skill shop. The sight of these skills caused Frenzied Sword to start drooling until he saw their prices. There was also a, and an array of mechanic skills, but none of them were as eye-catching as the, godly skill. Han Zio shook his head upon seeing Frenzied Sword's reaction. You aren't a technician, so you are unable to learn it. By now, Han Zio had already been solidified as a secret NPC in Frenzied Sword's mind. If I can make him my teacher, I will definitely become rank one in no time. 
but I really wanted to be a pugilist. That much was obvious from his in-game name. Damn it, this had better be worth it. Are you sure you want to become a mechanic? Yes. You have gained 500 exp, $100. Buying a skill was like paying for lessons, and Hanzio's skill level would remain unchanged. The NPC began to walk away. Where can I find you? Yelled a flustered frenzied sword after him. Hanzio thought for a moment before handing him a piece of paper with the workshop's address on it. As frenzied sword watched him leave, he began to grow excited. This is my chance. With those skills and equips, I will definitely be able to climb to the top. Suddenly, his expression froze. I cannot let anyone find this secret NPC. To a city as big as the western capital, a few beta testers were truly insignificant. For now, Hanzio did not have any interest in them. The only reason he had come into contact with one was to test the NPC functions, and they certainly did not disappoint. Hanzio was already thinking up ways to use them for scamming players. Frenzied Sword as Han Zio thought back to the player from before, scenes from another lifetime began to play out in his mind. In his previous life, Frenzied Sword had been part of the first batch of professional Galaxy players. As a pugilist, he had taken the first competitive season by storm and won one of 24 spots to represent China internationally. This honor alone had cemented his status as a legend. Unfortunately, this future pugilist legend was now a mechanic. Han Zio did not know exactly how Frenzied Sword's fortunes would play out in this timeline. But he did know one thing for sure, there would be no Frenzied Sword representing China in the near future. The only reason Han Zio dared to choose the mechanic class was that he knew it would eventually become the strongest class. However, this was something that no other player could know. In fact, the class seemed so bad from the start that in Han Zio's past life, numerous gamers, including pros, who chose the mechanic class would give up their characters and restart in another class. I feel like I scammed him big time or something. Han Zio shook his head. Scam? Nah. He made the decision himself. On the contrary, if he can endure a few patches then he'll have me to thank. Yeah. From enlisting in the Star Dragon Army to joining underworld societies, there was no lack of work opportunities for players in the western capital. Even just by walking on the streets and interacting with NPCs, there were plenty of quests waiting to be triggered. From the money that they earn from these common quests such as find the missing purse, rescue the cat stuck on the tree, and other collection missions, it became clear to Sleepy Winter that exploring had been the right thing to do. Of course, as the western capital was a high-level zone, there were many places that the trio found inaccessible at their current level. Rainy Kim had been rejected at the gates of the Western Capital Academy while Twinkle Fried Rice had been held at gunpoint when he'd tried to enter District 1, almost giving away his first death. The day after, the trio enlisted in the Star Dragon Army, thereby gaining their first combat class. In order to test out the limitations of the quest function, Han Zio entertained Frenzied Sword and issued him with all sorts of strange quests, such as, and many more. From these tests, Han Zio learned that as long as the maximum reward was able to match the quest's difficulty, he would be able to choose any type of quest scenario that he wanted. Meanwhile, things were a bit different on the receiving end. Frenzied Sword, who found himself only being assigned crude and twisted quests, gradually began to develop a sense of fear toward Han Zio. Nonetheless, he religiously completed all of the quests, as the experience that Han Zio rewarded him with was several times more than the standard reward. That alone was enough for him to ignore his own morals. The quests allowed him to level up rapidly, and he used the earnings themselves to learn more basic skills from Han Zio. The beta test might have been unexpected for Han Zio, but overall, it did not do much to disrupt his plans. The beta players were simply too scattered and few in number to have much influence on their respective starting planets. Twelve days was not enough time for them to level up significantly. It would take longer for a breeze to develop into a storm. In the long haul, however, the influx of players would be like a gold mine to Han Zio. Helping to strengthen Frenzied Sword was only the first step. Soon, his progress would definitely catch the attention of the other players and his own association. His association would certainly capitalize on it and release information on this secret NPC in order to gain popularity. That was when the money and experience would start pouring in for Han Zio. Frenzied Sword might have thought he was hogging Han Zio to himself, but he was actually dancing in the palm of his hand. The women on Aquamarine are so beautiful urgently looking for party members to fight the Sand Bandits. Location, Fallen Dragon Valley, Planet Longtoon. 
Coordinates are, a shot of planet Brighton's magical floating city. I somehow transformed myself into some tentacled monster. How do I change back? Damn it, teach me how. Most of the threads were posted to request help or share information. As Han Zio refreshed the forum page, a new thread caught his attention. First B-Class Quest. Han Zio narrowed his eyes. He recalled that the first B-Class mission had only appeared after the official launch. How could someone have unlocked such a high-class mission during the beta test? The Throne of Gods Guild had 15 players in the beta test. It was a team of core members led by both the leader and the vice leader. Before the beta test started, they had already decided to list science as a preference. Their reasoning was simple, since the world of Galaxy had a galactic setting. Science would definitely be a core driving force of the game. As such, they were all able to start together on Aquamarine and had also quickly purchased a map to begin exploring. The leader, Jupiter, was the one who decided to join the germinal organization. Their starting zone had also been close to a germinal base. The throne of God sure has deep pockets. If only I could find Zero. The reward on Zero's wanted poster was extremely alluring, but Frenzied Sword knew that as he was operating alone, it would be like trying to search for a needle in a haystack. While it might have been a pity, it did not bother him too much. Frenzied Sword's eyes filled up with fire as he took another look at Han Zio. As long as I latch onto this guy, I will level up faster than anyone. Initially, performing all the strange quests that Han Zio gave him did give him a sense of aversion. However, he gradually discovered that they not were that bad after all. At the very least, they were interesting to do. Compared to hunting monsters, running around to carry out these errands was much simpler. Of course, this came at the expense of his morality. One day, he realized that his mind was becoming more open. And he had an epiphany, shame is but an obstacle to human evolution. Me, a pervert. No no no, I have simply transcended. I have found the way. Does that guy like you or something? Asked a bemused Lu Kyan as she pointed at Frenzied Sword. He was staring at Han Zio dreamily from the entrance of the workshop. He seems pretty sincere. Why don't you give him a chance? She teased, giggling. It was the first time that she had spoken normally to Han Zio since the misunderstanding. Han Zio rolled his eyes and reached out to tickle her, causing her to yell out and dodge, startled. Hugging her sides with crossed arms, Lu Kyan watched Han Zio closely with puppy eyes in anticipation of his next attack. Her grandfather's attempts at playing matchmaker had initially caused her much headache. However, she soon discovered that there was no cause for concern as Han Zio was not particularly interested in her. To be more specific, he did not even seem to be interested in women at all. Although this eased her worries, it also raised other concerns. A woman's heart is unfathomable. Pay her attention and she might become wary of you, but neglecting her won't do either. Unfortunately, one's looks also play an important factor. If you are good-looking enough, you won't have to worry about it. Lu Kyan's casual attire was revealing a tantalizing view of her front, but it did nothing to stir Han Zio's heart. Having been working for up to 15 hours almost every day recently, crafting had become the only thing that he could think about. Sometimes, he even found himself designing guns and weapons in his dreams. And the scary part was that once, when he woke up, he realized that the designs were all practical. Suddenly, the interface lit up. You have triggered the sudden quest. Quest hint, the assassin is closing in. Completion requirement, survive the encounter. Quest reward, unknown. Han Zio's face stiffened. The attack could happen at any moment. Damn it. Old Lu is not home now. For the quest to have triggered despite Feng Jun and his men keeping watch in the neighborhood meant that the enemy definitely had some kind of special ability to invade without getting detected. There was a high chance that it was a superhuman. It was vital to avoid dragging Old Lu and Lu Kyan into the mix as it could jeopardize his plans to unlock the hidden scenario that he had come here for all along. Facing his attacker head-on was also more of his style. An illusion. Han Zio forced his eyes open. You are under the attack of an illusion. As your INT is higher than 50, you are able to resist its effects. The darkness around Han Zio began to shatter as the effects of the illusion faded. As Han Zio regained his senses, he discovered that there was a man standing 5 meters away with a gun pointed directly at him. Click. He pulled the trigger. Han Zio's eyes widened. How am I supposed to dodge a shot at point-blank range? People often say that time slows down in the face of danger. What happened next was on a whole new level. In the face of imminent death, the world around Han Zio suddenly began to slow down. 
The expression of panic on Han Zio's face was replaced by a look of absolute coolness as his mind cast aside all unnecessary thoughts and emotions in order to process the situation. Han Zio was able to dodge the fatal shot by moving just two inches. The bullet grazed past the side of his face, all it caused was a searing sensation. The assassin's expression changed. How could he have dodged my sure kill shot? With his illusory powers, Norsa had successfully carried out over a hundred assassinations for the Germinal organization. So far, it had not mattered whether his targets also had superpowers. However, according to the intel given to him, Zero should at most be at the level of an elite agent. How could someone who relied on machinery to fight be able to break free of his illusion? The intel was completely off the mark. As Han Zio dodged, he whipped out both Berserk Eagles from his waist and activated as he fired a volley of deafening shots. The recoil from the shots was so powerful that it caused his hands to shake. Bang, bang, bang. All of the shots found their mark on Norse's chest. A perfect counterattack. Norsa began to stagger backwards. He had used energy to protect his body, otherwise he would have been shredded to bits. Coughing up a mouthful of blood, he immediately summoned whatever energy he had left to back up and flee. Hanzio narrowed his eyes and gave pursuit as he loaded a gun up with to fire a shot in the direction of Norsa's escape. The ensuing sea of fire forced Norsa to stop in his tracks. Gritting his teeth, he turned around to face Hanzio. Norsa's eyes began to glow with a mysterious seven-colored aura. You are under the attack of an illusion. As your INT is higher than 50, you are able to resist its effects. Bang! Hanzio unhesitatingly fired a single, precise shot that drilled a hole through the assassin's throat. Norsa clutched his neck in horror. My illusory powers have never failed me. Why is he unaffected? Hanzio strode forward to smack Norsa onto the ground with both guns. He then pressed them against his chest, pinning him to the ground. Bang! The sound of the shot was dull. As the incendiary bullet penetrated Norse's body, his internal organs were immediately set ablaze. He began to flail his limbs wildly, but only for a moment. You have killed the Germinal Organization Executor, Norsa, earning 7,500 exp. You have completed the sudden quest. You have been rewarded with a character summoning card. Feng Jun arrived late to the party with his team of fully equipped field agents. When he saw the blood on Han Zio's mask, his first reaction was to feel Han Zio's chin for any wounds. Are you hurt? Are you blind? Snapped Han Zio, pointing to the graze on his cheek. That's good. Feng Jun heaved a sigh of relief before looking at Han Zio apologetically. They had failed in their duty to keep him safe. It's not your fault, consoled Han Zio. This man is the Germinal Organization's executor, he explained, pointing toward Norse's corpse. He's an assassin who has never failed. Norse was widely feared even among the Six Nations. Once, he had gunned down a high-ranking Star Dragon official in broad daylight despite tight security. Upon confirming the identity of the corpse, Feng Jun's shock turned into amazement. Hold on, he came to assassinate you, but you killed him instead. Are you really that strong? You only realize that now. Han Zio glared at him as he checked the interface for the quest reward. Character summoning card, you are able to use this character's ability once. Character, Norsa Connor. Ability, illusory power. Only targets with more than 50 INT can resist this ability. If Norsa has found me, then it means the germinal organization must know exactly where I am. Not necessarily, replied Feng Jun. The intelligence department has the network locked down. Hey, where are you going? Called out Feng Jun hastily. I still have to take you back to HQ for debriefing. No time to explain. Quickly request for permission to seal all of the city's exits. It was possible that Norsa had learned of his whereabouts from the spies in the city, and that he had come straight for him right after. In that case, it was not too late to take action. Han Zio knew exactly who the head honcho of the spy network was. The reason he had not taken action against him so far was that the germinal would simply send a replacement to take over. On the contrary, leaving him alive had its advantages. Norse's death would confirm Han Zio's presence in the western capital. But if he could stop the intel from getting out, the germinal would not be able to pinpoint his location. Through a series of twisting alleys, in the process, disposing of three muggers, Han Zio soon arrived at a small, dilapidated church building. It was now used as a means of shelter by some homeless people. In the warring period of the old era, religion had served as a means of mental support for many. At one point, this church in particular had managed to amass millions of believers. However, the savior that they believed in never appeared, so eventually, people stopped believing. There were a number of vagrants in the building, but when Han Zio could not see the one that he was looking for, he abruptly grabbed the nearest one up and questioned, Have you seen a tall, bearded man with the tattoo of a red wolf on the back of his hand? 
The vagrant shivered at the sight of the blood-covering Han Zio. You mean Lu Gaowen? He answered meekly. We call him tongueless because he never seems to speak. I think he went somewhere in the afternoon. Afternoon. Even regular citizens needed to go through lengthy checks at one of the three guard posts in order to leave the western capital. As it was currently only 2 p.m., there was still a chance for Han Zio to stop him. He could not count on Division 13 to pass a restriction order. Even if they were willing to, it would take some time for them to come to the decision. By then, Lu Gaowen would most likely have left the capital. Han Zio furrowed his brows. Which of the three exits was Lu Gaowen at? Time was ticking. Lu Gaowen left less than two hours ago, meaning that he must have received Norse's intel just then. Since Norsa had come directly to assassinate him, he must have tasked Lu Gaowen with reporting the information back to their organization. Lu Gaowen would definitely not have expected Han Zio to know of him, so he would not see a need to deliver the intel with haste. Under such circumstances, the city pass that he would use would most likely be the one nearest to him, the Northwest Pass. However, it was still possible that he would choose to use either of the further passes. There was no way to tell. As they set off, Han Zio immediately hopped into the driver's seat of Lai Yalin's car. Hey, it's my car, grumbled Lai Yalin immediately. I'll drive. You drive too slow. You don't trust the driving skills of a top agent. Lai Yalin was so outraged that her eyebrows were almost contorted upside down. Unfortunately, she knew that there was no time to argue, so she grudgingly got into the passenger's seat. Tighten your seatbelt, reminded Han Zio. Lai Yalin rolled her eyes at him, replying, You must be joking. I'm a pugilist, I'll be fine no matter how fast you go. Suit yourself, replied Han Zio with a plain nod as he stamped on the accelerator. Half an hour later, a yellow sports car appeared at the south entrance. Spinning almost full circle, the car left four sizzling, black tire marks on the road as it came to an abrupt stop. Hey, hey, I thought you were a pugilist. You, don't talk to me and, Bliarik. Why you Lin puked non-stop as she leaned on the car door. Who taught you to drive? Han Zio raised an eyebrow. Does driving have to be taught? D doesn't it? The first driver didn't have anyone to teach him, did he? Why you Lin gaped in the face of Han Zio's perfect logic. She was about to shoot back at him when, suddenly, the urge to vomit kicked in again, causing her to throw her head back to the side. As they neared the post, the station troop yelled out, Stop. Show your ID. As Han Zio reached into his pockets to take out his ID card, his expression froze as he realized that he had forgotten to bring them along. Without asking, he directly reached into Lai Yalin's pockets to find hers. Top pockets? None. Bottom pockets? None. Where's your pass? He asked. As Lai Yalin still seemed too dizzy to think straight, Han Zio continued feeling around that dynamite body of hers for it. Ah, oh, I found it, rejoiced Han Zio. He then held the pass up toward the guard, who had been gulping at the show. Oh, you guys are agents. Come on in. Lu Gaowen worked for an intelligence organization known as Storm Eye, one of the many subgroups that were secretly under the wing of the germinal organization. In most cities, Storm Eye had one head contact in charge of relaying information back to the germinal organization, as well as a few covert agents who gathered intel and only reported back to the head contact. Upon finding out that transmissions leaving the city were being blocked, he realized that Division 13 must have gotten wind of him somehow. Hence, he decided to go offline and take his computer apart in order to prevent being traced before heading toward the city entrance to leave. At present, Lu Gaowen was blended in with a crowd of people approaching one of the city's entrances. Norsa must have completed the assassination by now. Suddenly, the great metal fence gate before him closed up. What happened? Why are we being stopped? We have orders to temporarily seal the exits, announced a soldier, starting a commotion among the crowd. He's the one. The sudden shout from behind caused Lu Gaowen to turn around. There was a bunch of troops walking menacingly in his direction. They were obviously after him. Impossible. Lu Gaowen immediately looked around him to find an escape path, but it was too late. Not only was he surrounded by the crowd, there were simply way too many troops in the vicinity. As despair filled him, he allowed a soldier to pin him onto the ground without resistance. As Han Zio appeared at the scene, he sighed a breath of relief. We made it in time. As Lu Gaowen resigned to his fate, he decided to activate the poison sack stored in his tooth. He would rather die than divulge any information regarding the organization that he had dedicated his whole life to. Suddenly, Han Zio pulled out his handgun to fire a shot at Lu Gaowen's head, sending a trail of blood and brain matter spurting out. You have killed Lu Gaowen, gaining 3,500 experience. Why did you kill him? Why Yulin was stunned by Han Zio's sudden action. Division 13 could obviously have extracted a lot of vital information from him. There's poison stored in his teeth, 
his nails, and he even has some needles concealed in his clothes. We wouldn't have been able to stop him from killing himself. Han Zio shook his head. In any case, Lu Gaowen's death was truly insignificant to him. He already possessed all the information that he needed. Nonetheless, things were getting a bit dicey. Thank you for watching. Subscribe and enable notifications so you don't miss the next chapter.